Okay, I'm back on the old winch story again. This is part part three, segment three of my winch story. It's still the same winch. It's about a year later now. I've been mulling things over with this thing. And here's what I've decided. This part with the end play bit. Okay? Yeah! What I've decided is, when this thing is pulling, it, uh, it feeds the wire rope, believe it or not. It looks like a tangled mess of spaghetti. But it comes out this end, and it feeds onto it this way, okay? So, uh, that means the load is on the drum this way. And what I need to do is uh, take some of this crap out of here. The worm stays in the same place, right about in the middle. And what I need to do is, uh, is uh, get a thrust bearing, okay? Yeah! Uh, I was thinking ball bearing type thrust bearing uh, between the worm and this thing. Yeah! Uh, there's the worm. Well, the worm ends somewhere. Wherever it ends, where the worm ends and this thing begins, there needs to be a thrust bearing. So when I'm pulling, this thing has something to bear on instead of, uh, instead of bearing down there. You know, that's not a good thing. I don't think that's correct because the worm is too far out of, uh, out of the center. You know, you want the worm in the center. You want the worm to stay in the center of the uh, bull gear or whatever they call it. And uh, so I need a thrust bearing. It could be uh, solid brass, I guess. I was thinking a ball bearing, uh, a ball thrust type, like in a, you know, like in a scissor jack would be good, okay? So that's what I'm thinking. Number one, uh, either uh, a brass uh, thing machined, okay, uh, as a thrust bearing, or, uh, and, a, and another one here, to make sure that the worm stays in the center, it doesn't go up and down. The worm will always be in the center of the gear, no matter what, if you're uh, paying out or you're uh, lifting, okay? So that's goal one. And number two, the other goal is, this is winch mods discussion. Uh, you'll note that uh, when I turn this thing, okay, the spool uh, turns, but, but this shaft down here, this nut in the main shaft, and this part here, whatever it may be, is stationary. Uh, and it is, and it's likewise on this end, okay? So what I want to do is uh, take this, uh, take these nuts off, drive the shaft out, and then um, I may have to, this may involve cutting part of the winch off, but uh, what I was going to do was uh, I want to have the shaft uh, and the, uh, I want to have the spool, the gear, and the shaft be a single unit because on the end of the shaft uh, out here, I want to have something like a piece of hex stock, okay? Or either a couple of a double nuts welded on or something like that. Reason being, when you, when you pay out the rope, okay? Uh, let's say, yeah, that's another thing. But yeah, when you pay out the rope and you hook it to your load, there's a lot of slack, still a lot of slack in the rope, okay? So what I want to do is make a hand crank. I'll make a small hand crank. Then I can hand crank it up because this is a worm winch. They, they work excessively slowly, all right? So I want to have it what I call rapid pay up or like a, in effect, like a two-speed winch. So, uh, so then I can put like a ratchet on, on the nut or a hand crank and I can crank the nut around and that'll tighten up the, tighten up, take out all the slack. Then I could swap around and use this deal, okay? Uh, yeah, but that leads me to this discussion. What I'm thinking about doing here. Yeah, see, the worm is held in place uh, by this U-shaped uh, bracket, okay? And these two uh, bolts here. So uh, what I want to do is uh, extend this bracket. It looks like it's maybe quarter by one or whatever it is. Extend it downward to where it, and take it, and move this bolt down to where it's about there, okay? All right, and then I put that bolt back in with the, with the ear, with the extended ear or whatever. Put, it, put the bolt back in, pull it tight, and then back it up maybe, uh, you know, a 30-second of a turn or something. So then that bolt becomes a pivot, and then take this bolt 
and then I can remove that bolt, okay? And then I can swing, I can pivot the worm away from the bull gear. And then I could have what I call rapid payout, where, it, you know, where I could just drag the rope out, okay, for rapid payout purposes, hook it to the load, and then uh, uh, leave the worm disengaged, turn this with the hand crank, take the rope, take all, take all the slack out of the rope, and then put this bolt back in. Maybe I'll replace it with some sort of quick pin or a latch or something, okay? So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, you know, I don't know. It's just a plan, you know. Think it over a little bit. Take a couple of aspirins. And, uh, uh, you know, so, and another thing I was thinking about was when I'm paying the rope out, when I got the worm disengaged, this thing's flipped over a little bit, okay? And I'm paying the rope out. You don't want to pay it out too far anyway, okay? So I was thinking I put another thing up on here, like a, a drag block. I'll have like a wood block or something that bears on the edge of this. Uh, and a pivot over here with like a spring deal right, that holds this thing like an L-shaped thing over here and it bears on the edge of the drum so uh, when I pay it out the, the thing doesn't get all loose like that okay I can pay it out but the rope will stay tight on the drum and uh, you know and then I come back and then I turn the hand crank dealy take out all the slack swing this thing back over swing my worm back over to a correct engagement uh, it'll be pivoting down there, remember. There's my pivot. And then uh, either put this bolt back in or put the re retaino pin or the hook or the flip latch or whatever it's going to be. That'll hold the worm in, uh, engaged, okay? So then I can put the, the hand crank on here. Now, that, that involves a little bit of, um, you know, what I call jerking around a bit. But, you know, this bit with the, uh, with the worm moving up and down, that's a distance. That's mentally disturbing, see? So that's not a good thing. That's got what I call nagty. So, uh, yeah, we got to put a thrust bearing in there. We're going to either extend this thing. Yeah, we're going to extend that thing downward, you know, about another inch. And uh, maybe change these bolts. They look like they're probably, uh, you know, I don't know. They're probably 5 uh, national course. You know, we'll just replace them with like a half national course or something. And uh, <clears throat> because I got a whole bucket of those things, I got like 500 of them, grade fives. You know, one down here and one up here. This could even be a flip latch. You know, some kind of nice flip latch would be good, eh? For uh, for rapid, instead of screwing a bolt back in, you know, you just uh, have like uh, another ear sticking up here and you have a latch that flips over and pivots, you know, and it goes... And it goes right into a slot. And that holds this thing, you know. And I might even put ears on both sides of this thing. Sticking out one that way and one this way. So that it, has a, it has a more, it, it likes to stay in a nice correct, uh, instead of being able to swing this way and that way a little bit, it'll be a nice flush uh, deal. And, uh, and then this, uh, you know, we'll put the... Uh, Put the spacers in, the uh, thrust bearing in there. This will have an ear down there. Have another ear over here on both sides. And then, uh, you know, a nice drag brake and a solid, what I call a unitary spool with the spool, the gear, and the shaft all in one piece. And that's why I'd have to remove one side of this because once the um, bull gear and the spool and the shaft is all in one piece, and this would probably be like... Uh, uh, bronze, um, well, I call them top hat bearings, I don't know what they're really called, you know, like a flanged bearing. One on this side, probably with the flange on the interior, and one on this side, also with the flange on the interior, but you can't get the whole, you can't get the unit, you can't get this thing back into the frame uh, with a unitary thing, because the, the shaft will be sticking out, all right? So that's a no-go. So that means um, I got to have... Uh, I gotta have this side be removable, and what I'd probably do is uh, make it uh, maybe something like this, or mm, if I go the whole way, then it bears, then it gets into this tomfoolery here, which is not a good thing. So it might be something like this, and uh, you know, it could bolt back in. You know, maybe uh, make this thing be out of, make this replacement piece. Uh, I gotta cut this out and grind it to shape, leave enough. For the for the bolts, okay. 
so I can get that back in place. And then, uh, you know, I use my half by one national course bolts again, maybe one there, one there, and one there, or something to that effect. I haven't figured it out entirely. But that's the plan, you know? And uh, whether or not it'll come to fruition, you know, uh, remains to be seen. But uh, hey, um, think it over a little bit. Take a look at that. Take a look at that thing right there. That's not a good thing, see? Got a lot of free play in there. That's not a good thing. And, uh, and it's a worm winch, so that means it doesn't have quick payout. And, I, you know, who's got a, who's got a whole lifetime to, uh, you know, let's say you want to pay this rope out about, uh, you know, 12 feet or something. Man, you got to sit there and turn this thing? Forget it. Who's got a lifetime for that? So you need this flip over feature. You need the worm disengager. You need this unitary shaft, unitary, um, you need the unitary, the shaft, the main shaft, which will probably end up being about three quarters or uh, seven eighths. Could be seven eighths because uh, I got a lot of seven eighths bushings. But anyway, yeah, and drill it an inch, you know, so yeah. Uh, you know, some oil lights in there, maybe put a boss on here so it could be, a, have the bearing could bear on more. And, uh, you know, that's the plan, you know. Uh, I know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a glamour winch here. This thing has a, uh, you notice this is a solid gear. These are really rare these days. You know, all you can get. <laughs> this is. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah, this winch has what I call a solid gear. You notice that's about three-eighths of an inch thick. And they're also cut on a slight angle. They're not, it's not a regular spur gear. It's slightly in the helical department, maybe about five or seven degrees, whatever it is. So yeah, it's a helical solid gear and uh, it's supposed to mate with this worm, which it does do. And uh, so yeah, uh, it's a fixer. You know, it needs a little work here and there, but hey, uh, who doesn't, you know, when they're, uh, when they're as old as this thing. This thing could be very nearly as old as me. But hey, you know, uh, whatever. It needs a little detailing here and there. It needs a little cleaning. You know, it's a fixer. But it's a nice one. Look how nice it is. Look at that. Look at the glamour. Still got the original uh, carnival paint on it. I don't know. I think this was had to do with a chicken coop. But I'm not really sure what it had to do with. But uh, that's my plan. So don't forget my plan. My plan is uh, bearings there, bearings there. Thrust bearing here for this, another spacer there, a flip, and this thing will have pivot down here, an extended ear down here, pivot bolt there. This will be a flip over latch, and uh, this will be unitary. The spool, the gear, and the new shaft will all be one unit, and there'll be bronze bearings, one on that side, one on this side, and uh, this will flip over, and we'll have what I call rapid payout, and they'll have flip this back in for uh for the final lift and we'll have the ability to turn to turn the spool with a with a uh, hand crank probably what i'll do is i'll uh get the new shaft and then i'll figure out what's the maximum size uh what's the maximum size uh uh hex i can cut the shaft to uh depending on what size final shaft i use and then i could go down to the flea market and get a deep socket, you know, maybe it'll end up being something like 9 sixteenths or 5 eighths, whatever it is, and then just weld that thing to a piece of flat bar and put a hand cranker, um, you know, a uh, piece of pipe on a, on a, on a, on another, on a piece of uh, three-quarter pipe on a half-inch stud, then I can turn it with the hand crank, and uh, things will be good, you know. But that's the plan. This is the old winch. I'm still thinking about it. I haven't given up entirely. I need to build a trailer, and uh, you know, this winch is involved because I got a lot of heavy stuff I got to lift. Okay, so uh, if you got a winch that's around this size and it's like this winch, and you want to sell it, you know, get with me. Okay, shoot me an email, keep in touch, and uh, and uh, think it over a bit. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.